Our call to worship is from Psalm 42. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Welcome to the Sturgeon Bay Moravian Church online worship. I have a few announcements to share with you. First off, if you get a chance, I'd recommend that you drive by the garden on 4th Avenue. Uh, there's been a lot of work done there, making a lot of progress, and uh, it may interest you enough and excite you enough that you'd be willing to volunteer to help. And if you are willing to help with the garden this summer, I would ask that you contact the office. A bi adult Bible school, school is still coming out every Monday morning, uh, but you have to look in your email to find it. Those of you who get all your news by text or by Facebook or some such thing, you have to go old school here and go back and look at your email. We're still looking for graduate information. We're not exactly sure how we're gonna celebrate Graduate Sunday. It'll be a little different probably than what we're used to, but we want to do some type of celebration. And in order to do that, we need the, the uh, graduate, the families that have graduates to send in the information that we have requested. Obviously, confirmation has been postponed. Uh, we'll do that at time when we can all get together again and celebrate that. Uh, Shiloh, the Vesper services for Shiloh this summer, unfortunately, have had to be canceled. And uh, VBS, we've postponed. Uh, we're hoping maybe later in the summer we can do something, but right now, uh, the, for the original date, it's canceled. And our special music today will be supplied by Ari Van Leeshout, and uh, you'll see that in a separate recording, just like we've been doing every week. I hope you are all safe and well. Our scripture lesson today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. So clean house, make a clean sweep of malice, pretense, envy, and hurtful talk. You have had a taste of God. Now like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. And then you will grow up and mature as whole in God. Welcome to the living stone, the source of life. The workman took one look and threw it out, but God set it in the place of honor. Present yourselves as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary of vibrant 
with life, in which you serve as holy priests, offering Christ-approved lives up to God. The scripture provide precedent. Look, I am setting a stone in Zion, a cornerstone in the place of honor. Whoever trusts in the stone as a foundation will never have cause to regret it. To you who trust him, he is a stone to be proud of. But to you who refuse to trust him, the stoneman, the workman throughout, is now the chief foundation stone. For the untrusting, it's a stone to trip over, a boulder blocking the way. They trip and fall because they refuse to obey, just as predicted. But you, you are the ones chosen by God chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he has made for you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading of his word. I chose to read our lesson today from Eugene Peterson's version of the Bible, which is known as the message. I did this because he chooses to translate the word believe, which comes up often in these verses. He chose to translate that rather than using the word believe to using the word trust. And I think trust is a much better word. It describes Jesus as the cornerstone of our lives that we build upon, and it says, those who trust him, he is a stone to be proud of, but to those who refuse to trust him, for the untrusting, it is a stone to trip over, a boulder blocking the way. This is powerful stuff. Those who, who trust Jesus, well, we find strength in him. We have pride in that trust for him. We are willing to do, as is said in this passage, to tell the difference, the night and day difference between having him and not having him, from, from being accepted by him and not being accepted by him. But for those who do not trust him, it says he's an obstacle in their path. Trust. I have a, a simple question for you today. Who is it that you trust right now? We are being told so many different things by so many different people about what we should be doing and mostly about what we shouldn't be doing right now. So who do you trust? The farther we get into this current reality, the more it looks like we trust the advice of experts and politicians to a point where we get dis disillusioned or just weary of it all and we decide we're just going to do whatever we want to do. Experts say that trust comes as we interact with others and as we experience people acting on what they say they're going to do. We experience trust when we see that these people are consistent, when they communicate with us clearly. It's not, we don't trust them because they don't ever make mistakes or that they get everything right, but we trust others as we perceive them to be genuine and authentic. This weekend, of course, is Mother's Day weekend. Like many other special days, we will celebrate in a special day in a new and special way with our current circumstances. I think human beings first learn about trust from mothers. They lug us around inside themselves for nine months and then they go through all this incredible pain to bring us in the world. And yet after all that, they, they still feed us and they still clean us up when we mess ourselves. They sing us to sleep. They learn how to do a million and one tasks while lugging us around on their hip. My earliest memory, and truly it is, the earliest memory I have in my life 
is being in a laundry basket wiggling around in freshly washed sheets while my mother was hanging them outside on the clothesline. <laughs> Why is that my earliest memory? I don't know. Moms are the ones who think that we are beautiful, who tell us to uh, put that down before you poke out someone's eye. They read to us. Right now, they are educating an entire generation while also working and caring for others. I could go on and on and on, but my point is, is that we first learn trust from them. And trust is not about mothers being perfect. We learn trust because through them we understand love. Forget what the experts say. Trust is born in love. We need to remember in these remarkable times that we need to hold on to that. As people are beginning to fray a little bit at the edges, we need to hold fast to the trust that we have in Jesus and take seriously the encouragement that we got at the beginning of the verses I read for you. It says, so clean your house. When we get tired and we forget what day it is, we need to start begin by cleaning our house. Make a clean sweep, not of the dust and dirt, but inside of ourselves, our house. A clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk. You have had a taste of God. Now, like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness, and then you will grow up mature and whole in God. Moravians, we need to be mature in our faith. Do not surrender to malice for those you disagree with or hold a pretense that you are better or that you are more righteous in your thoughts and opinions than others are. Do not resent those who you may perceive have it better than you do at this time. Do not speak ill of others or say those words that you know will bring pain. Receive and share be a channel of the infinite kindness of God. Remember to trust. Even when it is confusing to know who and what to trust in, if you first look for the love, it is there that you will be able to build upon something. I am grateful for the unwavering love of my own mother. She's had to put up a lot with a lot for me over 61 years. As much as I cherish that first memory I shared with you in the laundry basket, I cherish today as much. As she sits in her sewing room cranking out masks, well over 700 now, since that first day when we all got locked down and she sent me to Walmart to buy up every piece of elastic I could lay my hands on, her labor of love is being worn by people all over, from people who are working up at Pick and Save to nurses that are working in the ICU to Milwaukee to, to a man, brand new mother who has brought home her baby in New York City. And so mom inspires me. Friends, we need to trust one another. We need to love one another and we need to inspire one another. Thank you to all you mothers and you grandmothers and to all the women who have taught us, whether you bore us or not, that love is the place on which we build. That is what is the chief cornerstone in Jesus, the love in which we can build all relationships with others. Let us pray. Gracious God, in times of uncertainty, we have the security of knowing that we can trust you and that we need to have courage to step out on faith, to build relationships with others. Lord, on this Mother's Day weekend, we thank you for our mothers, for our grandmothers, 
for all who nurture and care and guide and inspire and challenge and educate us. Lord, we pray this day for those who are protecting us. We particularly pray this week for nurses, for those who are incredibly brave in serving our communities. Lord, we lift up to you those who risk their health to keep the rest of us living comfortably. We pray particularly, Lord, for, for the many, many people across this nation who, who work in meatpacking facilities who are facing great illness while trying to keep our food chain working. God of grace and love, we ask for your healing hand and wisdom to be with those who are discerning how to move forward in these difficult times. Gracious God, we also pray for wisdom as, as we start moving towards trying to get back together, to being able to see one another and relate to one another. Lord, we pray that you will show us how the best way it is that we should approach this and do this. God, most of all, we thank you for your love the love that you instill in us and the gift that you give us in one another. And we ask for your blessing upon us all. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you both now and forever.